Welcome to the New Life Behavior International videocast and podcast series. Presented by volunteer instructors, the New Life Behavior International series is presented in countries globally and in several on the African continent. Courses are available on nlbi.co.za and is absolutely free of charge. However, donations are welcome and completely voluntary. The core curriculum is a comprehensive study to discover a meaningful and personal relationship with God, with the objective to help individuals from all walks of life to be reconciled to God, reconciliation to families and society. The curriculum contains 174 lessons divided into 14 courses and is well received by both Christians and non-Christians alike. All the lessons are available on our website nlbi.co.za and you may communicate via email info at nlbi.co.za The outline of the curriculum is explained by volunteer instructor Oscar de Vries. These lessons will cover the following A sense of self A sense of family Parenting matters True freedom Christian marriage skills, Christian women, attitudes and behaviors, Christians against substance abuse, is a family net series, the seeker Bible study series, prisoners of Christ, managing my anger, Christians against sex addiction, managing my finance. In this way, we say welcome to New Life Behavior Ministries. Good day, listeners and viewers. Great to have you back again. As we're into this exciting but challenging series on Christian marriage skills and today we come to lesson nine which is called the christian couple her role his needs now last time we spoke about his role and her needs so (laughs) we're on the reverse side of of last the last lesson the role of the christian wife in a christian marriage and the needs of a husband that she must help meet. That's what it's about. And I want to reiterate that I think New Life is never trying to be smart and hold ourselves out above other people. Yes, we do use the Word of God as our guide, but it does not exclude anybody, because anybody can use the principles in their marriages and also in their relationship with each other. We're living in a time when marriage and the family is in grave danger and marital roles are under stress. Now there are many, many reasons for this and and I'm not going to go into all of the practicalities of modern life except to say that in a way humanity has departed from the original plan of the word of God. And what's happened is confusion is the result. You see, feminism and male chauvinism are emerging extremes, but they do not contribute positively to the establishment of a cooperative and satisfying environment for males and females. And there are other variations in our midst today. Other variations considering the Word of God. And this is also making the marriage relationship and the role between male and female complex and difficult. Now God created a basic order 
And that was way back in the book of Genesis when he said, A man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. You see, the the basic consideration is how they work together, cooperatively and effectively, for the good of all concerned, in this case, themselves and the family. At this point, you see, the, the status of the Christian wife in the marital relationship is not that she's subject to authority and authoritarianism and, and the likes, but she's a helper. That's why God created women to be a helper. Now let's let's make this note that there's no place in the Bible or in the Word of God that indicates that man should be a tyrant or an abuser of woman. Nowhere. Nowhere. The chief role of the husband is to be a breadwinner. And knowing that we as men as males, are equipped physically, psychologically, and spiritually for this task. Now, if we go back to um, Steve Farrer, a person called Steve Farrer, and we have, look, and we look at Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, which I'd just like to share these two verses with you, if I may. In Ephesians chapter 5, and verses 22 and 23 to be specific, it says, Wives, understand and support your husbands in ways that show your support for Christ. Now we come back to that principle, Christ and the church, his bride. The husband provides leadership to his wife the way that Christ does to his church, not by domineering, but by cherishing. So just as the church submits to Christ as he exercises such leadership, wives should likewise submit to their husbands. You see, to the wife it should be said that the form of submission takes, the form that this submission takes will vary according to the quality. This is really a qualification, isn't it? of the husband's leadership. And it shows the importance of a husband's leadership in a way. It says, if the, if the husband is a godly man, is who has biblical vision for the family and leads out in the things of the spirit, a godly wife will rejoice in this leadership and support him. And I'm sure the opposite also applies to what has just been said. Now let's talk about his needs. Well, again, we go back to, to, to Willard, uh, Willard Hart, Hartley, and we say to, that in his book, His Needs and Her Needs, he said, these are the needs that you'll find in ordinary circumstances. So we talked about the average wife, and we said, no, your wife's special. So we're talking about the average man, but I think your man is special. First of all, these are needs, sexual fulfillment. You see, where emotional affection is primary, the primary need of the wife, physical or sexual expression is prominent with men, with husbands. Recreational situations that a a, a, a husband wants a recreational companion. Your husband needs to you to be his, he, this recreational companion and be interested in and engage with him in things that he finds enjoyable. But perhaps most of all, try to develop some mutual interests. We're not all the same, but we can develop mutual interests. And then a man's need is a good-looking wife, an attractive spouse, just as wives enjoy a handsome husband. So the wife 
needs to consider that she remains attractive to her husband. You see, he needs to be proud of her in private and publicly. And then peace and quiet. See, when your husband comes home, it said he'll treasure the quietness and the peacefulness of a home. We need to remember that his work environment may be noisy and stressful. And I know there are a lot of working ladies, women as well. So it applies both ways. But in this case, meeting a husband's needs, it says his work environment might be extremely stressful. And he can't always control the circumstances. And that's why peace and quiet is important. Being proud of him is another one. He needs to have a sense that you are proud of him. That you have an honest admiration for him. And it's a motivating factor for most men. You see, when you recognize and value his capabilities, his confidence increases. And if we go back now to um, the, um, the Intimate Encounters, which was uh, written by uh, Dr. David and Teresa Ferguson and, and Dr. and Chris and Holly Thurman, they are the writers that it says, it spells out men's needs with the acronym CHERISH. And what does CHERISH mean? Well, the C means comfort. Giving loving assurance to your husband, to your spouse. And given through your words. And given through your actions. You see, your husband again might receive very little comfort from his surroundings or his peers. And then honor. You know, perhaps there are not many standing in line to value, appreciate and honor your husband in a, as being a meaningful person. We live in a world where that's not always present, but he does need to be admired. We need to try and honor our husbands. You see, make, make a genuine effort to show your honor to the man that you married. And then we have this word called exalted or exalting him, lifting him up. It says, what we need to do is to lovingly and continually work implicitly for his good by being supportive of him. And this effort, I must say, requires great patience and deep commitment. It's not always easy, but try to lift him up, even if you only lift him up to God daily in your prayers. And then the R in cherish. First, he needs to respect himself as a man. And you help him feel this way. Many people today dehumanize others. And, and, and a man does not need to dehumanize his wife. And in the same way, a spouse or a wife does not need to dehumanize her husband. Let your husband know that you're counting on him to be a leader and to give sound advice. Allow him to be the man that he can be. And then the intimate in cherish. Your husband has an innermost self and your husband has a vulnerability that he sometimes wants to share and maybe needs to share. But you see, maybe he won't share that because there's a natural male reluctance that we have to share our innermost self and our vulnerabilities. And so listen carefully to what your husband says. Empathize with his feelings. Don't say, I'm sorry. Try to get in touch with what he's actually saying. Allow him that reassurance that will open even the deepest and closed doors of his soul. And then security. And cherish 
the S for security. Security is the inner confidence that your husband can have in the dependable nature of your relationship. The result of your undeniable trust and commitment to him. Tell him that he's loved. We don't always have to use those words. Some of us don't use those words often. But tell him that he's loved. Make him feel secure. Every man needs this kind of security. And then lastly, happiness. Your husband needs you to be his wife. He does not need a second mother. He doesn't need a second helper. He doesn't need another boss or another supervisor or a competitor. He just wants you to be his wife. Some people say to be his cheerleader. Affirm him in every possible way. Love him unconditionally. I hope again that there's some help to wives in their role in meeting their husband's needs. It's really been a great privilege to share these things with you and I hope that we can take some of it into our own lives and into our marriages and our roles as wives and then our roles as husbands. Let's close today. Father, we are thankful we're thankful that there are husbands and wives that have learned the skill of being in community with each other, who cooperate with each other, that work effectively. But also, Father, we know that sometimes we struggle with all of this. But today our earnest prayer, Father, that our intention in talking about these things is not only to grow closer to you, and to, but also to try and change our behaviours in our marital relationships. So we pray for all marriages. We pray for marriages that are struggling, marriages that are in difficulty, marriages, Father, that are breaking today. Just, Father, help us in whatever way you can, bless our marriages, we pray, Father, in Christ's name. Amen. Now, just a few little easy tips. First of all, each lesson is going to ask you to note a few personal thoughts about the question that is asked. And then read the questions at the end of the lesson, but do not attempt to answer them. Then study or read the lesson. Then answer the questions and then give yourself the opportunity to write some personal reflections. And you are more than welcome to send your answers and questions to info at nlbi.co.za.